I would say the majority of my 50% isn't even a lucky break in AI safety, but it's more like an unlucky break in AI capabilities, right? Like we just get to another plateau and it takes us 50 or 100 years to actually get AI super intelligent. And then maybe in that time we figure out principles of safety. And the other part of, of my good 50% is like, we finally come to our senses and say, wow, we really need to pause this. Like we're not joking around here. It's time to pause. So that whole cluster, is it really 50%? Is it 10%? Is it 90%? I really don't know. Like when I say 50%, I should really mention that the amount of digits of precision that I'm using is very low. So I could easily wake up one morning and be like, oh, I'm not 50%, I'm 80% or I'm 20%. But what would be shocking is if I wake up one morning and I'm like, oh, I'm less than 5% PDOM or I'm greater than 95% PDOM. That seems crazy to me. I don't know how one would ever get those odds. And so it's very meaningful to say 50% just to indicate that I'm not in that super high or super low range. When I say 99, whatever number of significant digits, this is a prediction over infinite interval. I'm not talking about next year. So I suspect almost everyone on this PDOM prediction list is doing it for one year, three years, five years. If you ask me about my one year prediction, I'll give you something very conservative, 10, 10%, two years, maybe 25%. But if you keep going, if you keep adding it up, probabilities over infinite intervals will get you pretty close to one. Uh, people often say, well, that's crazy. You're discounting all the possibilities of, you know, asteroids hitting the planet. Let's say one hits. Let's say humanity survives. We have to rebuild civilization, rebuild technology. 500 years later, we're still building AI. In my mind, I think if we slow down capabilities enough and if we speed up safety enough, if we have like a Manhattan project to properly do safety, then I think eventually at some point the lines cross, right? Like if AI was going to take a thousand years and we actually cared about getting our best scientists to work on safety, I'm pretty optimistic that the lines might cross. Maybe it's like a coin flip, 50-50 at that point. Whereas it seems like, Roman, if I'm understanding you correctly, I think that you think that the AI safety problem is just fundamentally unsolvable. So AI capabilities can just take as long as they want, but when they come come along, then we're dead. Is that basically your position? Well, it's another feature, whatever is actually solvable or not, you you got it right. I don't think it's actually possible to indefinitely control super intelligent machines. I think it's a very arrogant position to suggest it's possible, not at an instance in time, not for a specific model, but forever, no matter how much self-improvement, no matter how many new discoveries we have, you'll never have one slip, one bug in your system. That's that's an impressive level of confidence or arrogance. I think we're going to chip away. I think we're going to keep having you know one theorem at a time. We're going to have one insight. We're going to have um, dead ends. Um, why do I think that it's fundamentally possible? Well, I, I just think that like it, all it has to do is be reflectively stable and not change the original utility function and get the original utility function right. I mean, well, why, what's fundamentally impossible about that? Well, a lot of uh, kind of ingredients in that solution don't seem to be well defined. So then you're talking about get the fundamental utility function alignment problem. Who are we aligning with? Who is the group of agents? Is it a specific agent, 8 billion humans, including animals, aliens? Our volumes are not stable. So even if you managed magically to get 8 billion people to agree on something, we still would not be happy with that set of morals and values later on. So it's dynamically changing. There is, of course, disagreement. You have multi-objective optimization problems, which I'm not willing to compromise my preferences. Maybe someone else is. Uh, last time I was at an AI safety conference, people tried to formally define what the alignment problem is. And the only thing they agreed on is that we don't even have a formal definition of what we're trying to do. Each one of those steps seems to be impossible. If you had that set of rules, converting concepts like good and evil into C++ is not trivial. We wouldn't know how to enforce it in a system. And all that assumes there is no malevolent agents who will take your very friendly super intelligence and flip a bit on it. Then you say it will do what's good and what we want. You mean like it will feed us donuts or carrots? What's good for you or what you actually enjoy? So that's an excellent question. You know, what are, are our actual values, right? And I agree, it's super hard to specify. Normally the way I punt on this problem is I'm like, look, I can tell you that my values are not everybody getting bombed right now. We're having a ludicrous conversation here today. Absolutely ridiculous. If you had told me two, three years ago, I'd be sitting here with you guys having this conversation. I'd tell you, you're fucking nuts. That's crazy. Um, how do you find the mental fortitude to press ahead every day 
to smile at your family, kiss them out the door, tell them everything's going to be okay, and have this conversation. Super easy. Humans have built with this bias where we ignore our own fear of death, right? <laughs> All dying with 100% probability. My parents, uh, my children, my neighbors, my friends, everyone I know is getting closer. So we kind of built to ignore that fact completely and go on as nothing is happening. Be happy, which is doing it at the level of humanity now. Yeah, I, I think that's a great answer. So for me personally, I mean, it's there's an irony to this because you know I live in San Jose, California. It's a safe area, and we're we're you know the fridge is stocked, right? The house is is safe. the The chance that my kid's safety is going to be in jeopardy for the next year is very very low, right? So some of the safest conditions that have ever been created in human history, I'm getting to enjoy. Um, and so I yeah you know I consider myself lucky because when I think about most humans throughout history trying to tuck their kids into bed. They had all these worries, right? Like, are we good on food for the rest of the week? Are we good on safety? Is the other tribe going to come attack us? Are criminals going to come steal our stuff? And I'm not worried about any of that stuff. But at the same time, rationally, I'm like, well, as humanity as a whole, not just my kids in particular, but just everybody may only have a decade or two, right? So it's on one hand, I'm like way better off than most of humans try to tuck in their kids. On the other hand, you know, I, I have this big worry that potentially outweighs everything else, but all you can do is, as Roman said, right, just like, well, just take it one step at a time, right? I mean, try to focus on the problem and and that's it. I mean, I don't have any insights. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like the mental game we play is, uh, right, obviously we're all dying, Roman, everybody's dying and, and you know, we're all closer every, every second, but it's like, um, if you can, you know, just sort of like feel the difference between no tomorrow for you, no tomorrow for me, but no tomorrow for everybody, no more tomorrows at all is a totally different thing to handle, you know, sort of in your, in your, in your gut, because, you know, like think about people when they're dying, old people, when they're dying, they're so into their grandkids, they're, they, they just want to know that the story continues. And, and the idea that it doesn't is something fundamentally unhuman and um, I think really difficult to consider. Uh, yeah, um, I, I mean that's that's true. That weighs on me a lot. I think it's it really sucks that the story won't even continue because that's usually the last solace that anybody can take, right? Even if you're being tortured to death, you're like, well, at least the story is going to continue. But now you won't even have that. <laughs>